Hey everyone, Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. So what I want to go through today is a bit of a breakout session around how to allocate budgets to a set, uh, sorry, not budgets, uh, how to allocate financial insights to a set template. Now, this was an idea that I covered at one of the recent Enterprise DNA learning summits in, one, in an individual session, which lasted for uh, just over an hour. But what I want to do is I want to break out and show you a key technique that I went through um, because I went I covered a lot and I'm, there's just no way I'll be able in that one session I wouldn't be able to have covered that here. But specifically, what I want to show you is how can we say template something up or or have a set template for our P and L statements in this particular case, or it could be for any financial reporting or any reporting in that case. How we can have a set template and then allocate results to that particular template within DAX formula, okay? And that's how, in this particular case, how I am able to create subtotals within a table. Now, those of you who have seen and utilized tables inside of Power BI, you'll know that you can't actually do this with the standard tables where you just say drag and drop information into a particular table, subtotals currently cannot be created and you cannot have a set, say, structure around how you might want to represent financial information or just any information um, for that matter, okay? And so I want to show you how you can do that within formula and what formulas to use and then how you would, what sort of logic that you would need to utilize to be able to make it work, okay? Now, I'm hoping that this will be improved at some point in the future. Um, but in, in saying that, there are so many variations on what, what ultimately developers will want inside of Power BI. So I don't exactly know how, how the Microsoft team would ever be able to develop something that would per be perfectly, that would perfectly work for every single scenario. So that is why this particular technique is so key and, so, and, and why I've I spent a lot of time devising it and now showcasing how, how you can actually utilize it. But as I say, there was a lot that went into this particular session. And so there was, you know, uh, how, how did, uh, within it, I actually sh showed you, well, how do you actually integrate information from your from your actual re uh, reporting, say your sales versus, say, your expense information, which could be in a totally different system and how you actually integrate that in. And I went through that. But all I want to show you here is how is the templating idea? How do you actually template up these results? Now, first of all, I want to show you what the template is and what it kind of looks like, okay? So let's have a look at this. Now, what I've done in this particular example is I have created a table and what I'll do is I'll just sort this correctly. So I created a table and I did it in Excel in this instance. And I, uh, what I did is I set it out in the exact format that I wanted. So you see here that we have a sales, these are all our, rev, this is our revenue breakdown where I've broken it down by distributor, export, wholesale, and then I've got a subtotal for revenues and then so on and so forth. And what I did was I put an index number um, through every single row, even, even if there was a blank, right? Okay, even if there was a blank, there was nothing, I still wanted an index number in there and that's crucial to make, you know, to make this all work. And so you see here, you could met you could customize this entirely right this is just the template that i use in this particular example okay now you will also see and this is important to go through here is that this particular table this one i'm highlighted on right here does not have any relationship to anything okay no relationship to the financial information which is actually in this part of uh, the model in this particular table here there's no relationship and so what we need to do is you need to use dax measures to actually bring this all together we need to allocate financial information to the correct row based on some dax logic okay and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to focus in on the annual t annual totals here okay this annuals total, this annual totals result here first, okay? Because this is where the key logic all happens. Now, the key way to allocate information to unique rows or unique, say, headers or subtotals in this case, is to use switch true, okay? It is like nested if statements, but a way better way to write to write out this, this type of logic because you can just put it row by row by row 
and you know, it's very simple to audit. Now the key here is we need to identify what row we are on, okay? So for any particular, because remember there's no relationships or anything like that, so what we need to do for any particular row that we are in in this table, we need to identify what is the item. So, so here we might have, say, this is the item here, or COS referral fund, so this is what I would consider an item, or alternatively, we need to work out well, what is the summary and so that's, that could be total COGS, total gross profit, and total revenue sum sitting up here. And that's what these variables are actually doing here. At every single row, they're trying to work out, okay, well, what are these particular items? Then what Switch True is doing is we are running through and, and working through some logic, and we're trying to work out, well, what is true and what is not? And so what we're doing at every single row here is we're working through, well, is the current summary total revenue okay well this is obviously not total revenue right is the current summary total cogs is it total gross profit is it total expenses is it net profit okay and so what that enables us to do is it says well if this equals to true if it does equal to true and i'll just find that net profit one so if it does equal true we'll then bring through this individual result so bring through, and this is a prior calculation that I've done, right? And it says, well, bring through net profit divided by a um, thousand, okay? So bring through this particular re uh, result here for this individual row. And so the, the, the key concept here is we're allocating. We're allocating results to certain rows based on logic that we're creating. And we're trying to identify what row we're on, and then we're passing through an individual result or measure for that particular row. Then what we can do in switch is we can have an alternative result. So say for instance, so you see here that all of these, all of these, see all of these lines, these are all basically the, the subtotals. So there's not as many of those, right? So if, all, if none of those evaluate to true, well then we get down to the alternative result. And this is the very last input that you have in the switch true um, in, in, in the switch function and in, in the specific way that we write this logic. Now the alternative result here is very similar but it can be a bit more dynamic because what I've created here is another formula prior which allocates based on uh, which does a calculation um, and then so so actuals is uh, so dividing so what actuals is doing is creating a positive result for revenue and a negative result for expenses right and so uh, I've input this inside a calculator and then I've said we'll go and look and basically what filter is doing is going go and look through the financial details table and then return the actuals value for whatever current item we are in and so you just remember current item is evaluating very uh, right at the front and from a variable and saying well if we are say let's have a look this particular this particular row here telecommunications well that would be uh, that would be worked out right at the start of the calculation and then it's saying we'll bring through the actuals for telecommunication uh, which will be in the financial details table and that's how dynamically we can simplify things so we don't need to write uh, a switch statement for every single individual row here because a lot of them we can calculate dynamically this way it's only what um, us having to do this at a more uh, sort of subtotal level that we can allocate it this way and this is fine for us to do at um, you know for our generic uh, at a more generic level so pretty cool technique, right? Now, so the, the key here is the allocation, the way you can allocate with, with switch true, okay? Now, what I've also done is I've broken it now by quarter one, quarter two, quarter three, and quarter four, right? Now, I'll just show you one because I'll show you what you can do from what we did, what we just looked through. So you see here that annual total is what we just created. Then all I need to do is because all of this will continue to be filtered by, um, uh, all of this will, will filter by the dates table because and, and what I've done all I've done is I have filtered it by say Q1 and that's why and Q1 comes from the dates table and that's this this particular column here the reason why it will still all filter is because there is actually a relationship between this table here right where all of the calculations are occurring like this is where the actual numeric data is there is actually a relationship between that and the dates table and that's why we can still filter by anything in the dates table. So it's pretty cool stuff how you can combine it all right. And then what we can do is we can then click into any particular year and it will dynamically change for that particular year.
Okay, so this has gone on a little bit longer than I thought, but just the allocation method and the temp and how you can set up templates and allocate to them. You know that that, that was the, the the core part of um, what I wanted to show you. Now, as I mentioned, there was there was a bit I glanced over there, but the all of it was covered in the Enterprise TA Learning Summit session. It was an incredibly detailed session, so hopefully you were able to to come along to that. Uh, if not, I'll show you. I'll, I'll add, try and add a link below to where that actually sits within Enterprise DNA Online, so you can um, have a look where that is. And, and um, consider me uh, if you haven't got membership already, consider upgrading to membership to able to, uh, to to enable being able to watch it. Okay, wishing you all the best. Um, hopefully, you like this one. Uh, throw the video a like if you if you like this uh, like this technique and this tip. And don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise DNA TV, putting out heaps of content on Power BI. I can't wait to get that into your hands. Okay, talk to you soon.